There are specific call logs that I want to refer to, and they're part of that report. Um, there's an extraction report, part one, and text messages. But there are emails about Shelby's wife's job, hospice, other people that are not involved in the case at all. Um, so if it's admitted into evidence, you know, there's things he said on the record. I don't expect the jury to read through the whole huge thing. I just wanted to use some exhibits, maybe for closing or something. So my, here's my I don't suggestion. Know how to handle that, I guess, he has a flash drive. I'm probably mm -hmm. going to use the wrong terms. I don't know how to talk about computers. He's got a yeah, flash drive. It's got a bunch of stuff on it, part of which is an 1,800-page report thereabouts. Mm -hmm. Also included on it are some demonstrative, demonstrative exhibits yeah. mm -hmm. and maybe even some other things that are from other cases. I don't know. My suggestion is we get a copy of the 1,800-page document and we submit it into the record jointly. Um, Probably tomorrow we'll try and print it off tonight. Maybe we can uh, do that, and we can admit that in the morning as we are sleeping on our clothes tonight, right? And uh, do that jointly, and then when you need to refer to something, you can simply refer to it by picking up a small little pack and saying, this is a part of the exhibit, whatever it is. Okay, That's my suggestion. Because the, there are some like attachments and things that don't have anything to do with the case. I don't want to have those in the record. They're just not. I mean, a, lot, a lot of paper. It's a lot to redact. If we had to I know, it is a lot to redact. However, you all want to do it. That's so what we're, we're, so we, do it. we weren't going to admit it just because it's so, so much we, stuff that the And it's got some stuff that just is not yeah. relevant and maybe even prejudicial. Yeah, there may be some well, prejudicial I don't know what to have. I don't have a clue. Right. Right. Can we agree that we can use things from the report as demonstrative evidence that we will show the jury, but maybe not publish to the jury? Uh, I don't have an objection. I mean, it's, I what it's, from, the, like. yeah, it's yeah. from the report. And Will they know talk. what it looks like? I think we can, can we jointly agree right now that both of us can speak about the report and portions thereof in our closing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that I sounds that, good. That sounds good. Okay. 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 Do you have any further questions, Ms. Karen? No further questions. Anything else from this witness? No, Your Honor. Uh, witness, may, may be excused. Yes, Your Honor. You're excused, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, just uh, lay that up there. The clerk will get it. The bailiff will get it. And uh, you're released. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Let's take a, let's take about a 10-minute break. I, and we'll get back to it and try to wrap up a lot today.
Okay. Anything to report? No, no, no. Have a seat. I believe we're close to finishing up for the day, so we have one more witness. One more. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Jessica Copeland. What's the last name? Copeland. Copeland. C O P E L A N D. testimony you give in this trial be the truth, the whole truth, and that's the truth. I do. Thank you. Have a seat. Please speak up loudly and clearly so we can all hear you. Please oh. identify yourself and spell your full name, please, for the record. My name is Jessica Copeland. It's J-E-S-S-I-C-A C-O-P-E-L-A-N-D and I'm employed at the Kentucky State Police Eastern Laboratory Branch located in Ashland, Kentucky. So you work every day in Ashland, or I mean that's where your lab is, that's Ashland, it. Kentucky. Yes, sir. Um, how long have you uh, been employed there? I have, um, I graduated from Marshall University in Huntington, West Virginia in 2004. I have a bachelor's degree in uh, micromolecular biology, and I started working at the forensic lab in August of 2004 and have been there ever since. So, in the course of your work there at Eastern Laboratory Branch in Ashland, Kentucky, did you have the occasion to uh, examine a white pillar in the case of Kentucky State Police Post 10, Case 13C01153? Yes, sir, I did. Could you tell the jury about uh, the process you went through to examine this piece of evidence? and how it came to you, et cetera. So the, the um, white pillow was submitted to the crime lab um, by uh, Post 10, and uh, that item of evidence was submitted with a request for a distance determination. So I'm sorry, for a request for what? Distance <coughs> determination. Distance determination. And when an item of evidence is, re is uh, submitted with that request, what we do is we uh, microscopically examine the item and I chemically, I did some chemical testing so it was chemically processed as well. And what we're looking for are gunshot residues like um, partially burned and unburned gunpowder particles or lead residues. And um, so in the course of my examination uh, I documented um, the uh, widths of the, those holes and. What I had was a pillow with a perforating hole, which went through each side, and um, both sides of that pillow were processed chemically, examined microscopically, and there were inside the hole, the fabric, um, the stuffing of the pillow was melted inside. The hole was wider than a typical bullet hole, and lead residues around the edges of both holes were produced. And um, that's typical of what a contact gunshot looks like. So that was the result of the examination. So based upon your examination, you is that within a degree of scientific uh, certainty? That's correct. What were you uh, able to conclude? So uh, the pillow was microscopically examined and chemically processed and a hole in the center displays chemical and physical effects typical of a contact gunshot. If I may approach the witness here, yes, sir. Uh, and to exhibit uh, Commonwealth Exhibit 3. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In this collection of photos, I'm showing uh, would be in this collection of photos, some photos of the pillow. And right have you, 
seen that uh, particular pillow and gunshot. Yes, this this photo does look like uh, the uh, the evidence I received. And uh, and that you examined to find the gunshot wound. I mean, the gunshot hole in the wound of the pillow. If a pillow can have a wound, but a hole in the pillow. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Did you complete a report of that examination? Yes, I did. And is when is it dated? The report uh, date of completion is May 20th, 2013. I may approach. Did you sign that report? Mm -hmm. I did, sir. And is this a true and accurate copy of that report? Yes, sir. I'll move to uh, introduce this, Your Honor, as exhibit. Where we are. 11. Exhibit 11. Thank you. Any objection? No. No. All right. Okay. Uh, the report is uh, introduced as uh, Commonwealth Exhibit 11. Thank you, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. Any cross examination? Just a few questions. Can I see that report? Exhibit 11. <coughs> Um, so, you work in a lab? Yes, I do. Right? Um, and then everything that comes to your lab, you pass, and everything that come, comes because of officer filled out a KSP 26? Yes, right? that's correct. The KSP 26 is what we refer to as a request for examination, and the evidence submitted to the lab comes with a piece of paper with a request for examination. Um, and do you only examine um, bullet holes, or do you do other types of testing? Um, well, specifically, I'm a, a firearm expert, so I do firearms, tool marks, gunshot residue, uh, distance termination, shoe prints, tire tread, um, serial number restoration, all those types of analysis are my specialty in the lab. So if somebody wanted you to test that, they just would fill out a 26 and then you would get it and then you would do those tests? Those tests? Yes. Law enforcement, we receive evidence from law enforcement agencies in Kentucky. Thank you. At all? All right. Yeah, the exhibit's up there. I was just, all right. I didn't see it because I didn't walk up there, so I'm just double checking. Anything else for this witness? No, sir, she may be excused. All right, ma'am. Thank you. You may be excused. Have a good trip back to Ashland. Thank you, sir. That needs to put this over here. I think that's going to wrap it up for the day. Is that correct, gentlemen or ladies and gentlemen? Yes, sir. We would ask for a recess for the day. Mm -hmm. All right. Commonwealth uh, will uh, uh, plan to be here in the morning as early as the court requests. And we most likely will uh, announce close okay. of our evidence, but we're going to sleep on it All right. until in the morning. Uh, I'm going to ask you all to be here back maybe about 10 till 9. Usually when we got we got here at 8.30 this morning, we had some preliminary matters to go through, so you had to wait. So let's try about, you know, about 10 to 9, and, and perhaps we can get uh, get a lot more out of the way, or not out of the way, but get a lot more done. Tomorrow we're, do, we're moving along real well, and uh, we appreciate your time and patience and your attention most of all. And uh, so uh, please, uh, when you go home this evening, uh, again, don't watch the YMT. Um, I keep picking on WYMT, but uh, I'm not really. Don't watch, but, but lay off the news. Please don't watch the news, and, and uh, at least to the extent that anything comes on about this trial or anything. All the evidence is an end, and uh, it's critical that you, you hear everything before you, you deliberate on the case and, and form any opinions. So please don't do that. Don't talk among yourselves about the case. Uh, stay off of Facebook and, and, uh, and, and other social media. And uh, if anyone approaches you, tries to talk to you about the case, please report back to me in the morning. 
All right. So have a good evening. Have a good dinner. And uh, we'll uh, see you in the morning.